Hello, I'm Jennifer Branch. Today we're painting these beautiful Portofino boats from Italy in the third installment of my reflection series. Let's paint. I start with a very loose drawing here and just dash the color around very light blues. And I make sure that I have not painted over any of my whites. Some bright cobalt teal. This is as dark as this area that kind of glows underneath the boats is going to get. Just dash the color around. A little bit of Nico Azo yellow floating in. Keep this area pretty light and pull the color up into the boats because the water is reflecting on the boats and the boats are reflecting on the water. This is a very translucent, interesting area because it has the, you can see the boats in the crystal clear water, but you can also see the reflection of the boat. So it gets a little complicated, but in that what makes it interesting to paint. So some more of the nice cobalt teal, and this is on the bed of the cobalt blue and very subtle blues because I didn't want too many harsh whites. This is a very toned down painting for me. You know, I usually do all the colors of the rainbow, but this is a little bit more subtle. Um, this is a mix of nickel azo yellow and cobalt teal. And I'm just dashing it around. And since I have already painted my light reflections with the cobalt blue, then um, I don't have to worry about harsh, harsh whites or softening everything. So nickel azo yellow mixed with cobalt teal. And I am mixing a lot more colors on a more subtle painting because it doesn't need the bright, bright colors flowing into each other quite as much. There's still going to be a lot of mixing on the paper though, especially with water. You always mix on the paper and water. So I'm using a tiny bit of cobalt violet to dull down some of the blues. This is tricky. I want to do it very subtly. Now some bright nickel azo yellow. And with the cobalt violet mixed in, it becomes very dark and dull, but I'm using very translucent color still. I'm not using anything grainy, you know, burnt sienna is nothing grainy. So it's going to have a very transparent effect because you can see those boats above the water and on the water. I'm sorry, below the water and on the water. <laughs> so water reflections like these where the water is very choppy, um, I always do many layers because the more you look at them, you it isn't just two or three colors. It isn't just two or three layers. It, um, it's reflections on reflections on reflections. And then you add the translucent water and you see what's below the water. And so the more complicated something gets, the more layers you want to do. All this looks very dark, but it will dry nice and subtle. The key point of this painting is that light blue transparent water that makes the boats look like they're almost hovering. They're not quite floating on the water. It's really amazing. They're just glowing this inner light um, from right underneath. You know, it looks like something, I don't know, like there's lights down there or something. And um, that really is a central point of this entire painting. Um, a lot of it is the subtle light, the play of color, the sparkle of the water in the distance, and the, the, you know, the bright colors kind of popping in in a couple places with the yellows and the, 
the reds, which by the way, this nice subtle grade blue is going to make really sparkle right. And the play of the water and the light, but there's always one central thing about a painting that you really want to do. And that's the wonderful glowing right below the boats. Now sp sped up a little bit, here's the background. We've got a lot of the nickel azo yellow as before, some cobalt violet as before, some cobalt teal mixed in to make the greens and with a little bit of um, other colors, the, lots of the cobalt violet because I want dull, I want a good backdrop. Um, a little bit of the cadmium red because I'm going to have some dashes of red in my boats so I want some dashes of red in the background as well. So I'm repeating the same colors all around the painting but I'm making some areas duller, the background, and some areas brighter, like right here. Cadmium red is a opaque red and it's rather grainy, but if you put it on in many thin layers, then it has the effect of being more transparent. I didn't want, I wanted a, I wanted an unsubtle orange and I wanted that to contrast with the blue greens of the water. So, and against the, the duller background. So bleeding the nickel azo and cadmium red together with a little bit of the cobalt violet gives me that very translucent wooden boat effect. Because these are bright, beautiful, ready, brown, varnished wood. Just gorgeous. So I'm focusing in on the central boat. Um, each painting, this one, since it's part of our reflection series with the lesson and the three other reflections, the two other reflections paintings, then I have less of the boat, but I couldn't miss the central one. It's just a gorgeous boat. So I've used just a little bit of wax crayon in here. So a lot of the lines are picked out with wax very subtly. I used a um, candle and for a lot of it because that's a softer wax effect and I wanted a hit and miss effect. Okay, so when you're painting something like a boat, notice the lines of the boards, how they go because you're, you're going to want your brush to go along the same lines. And I'm still using a mop because I still want a very loose effect. See all the hit and miss? You don't get the hit and miss so much with a synthetic care brush. Squirrel is the best brush for your hit and miss. And this is rough paper. So for the sparkles and the texture, a rougher handmade paper like this instead of something slick like a hot press will make a big difference. You'll be able to get the hit and miss effects. If you aren't sure of your brush strokes, try it out on a little piece of a scrap paper. Make sure you have that dry brush because dry brush can be very tricky because you want enough pigment to do it in a single stroke and not so much that you miss all the little highlights. Now this area underneath, there's some sparkle in the water and I want very dry brush. I want very hit and miss along here. So delicate. This is one of those tricky parts of the painting. So take your time, use a scrap piece of paper if you need it. This is not going to be the only layer on here. I do want a few layers. I'm using Quinn Rust. I've been really enjoying it. It's about the same color as Burnt Sienna, but it's ideal for something like this where I want very transparent. Burnt Sienna, not so transparent. So it's, it's good for other things. 
I'm dulling it down with a little bit of cobalt violet. I'm painting the lines very subtly. I'm not worrying too much about them. Very loose, still playing with the mop. mush all the water out of it so I can have more of a dry brush and that's the kind of line where it's it's very hit and miss very subtle and when you get it just right don't mess with it anymore of course I'm messing with it <laughs> little bit of a shadow underneath the kind of the bulge of the boat. Remember they're not just unless it's a very modern one it, it you can see the different boards even when they've been beautifully smooth and you can also see they curve more they curve in a lot more directions and than a modern fiberglass boat. A little bit of a shadow underneath there. And this is the boat I'm lavishing all the detail on. I don't want people to look in the background. I want them to see dancing light and some bright colors. I don't want them to necessarily look in the foreground. I want kind of a blurred focus a little bit of ripples, some interesting reflections. That's about it. I want people to notice this boat and the reflection underneath it and that glowing effect. Maybe a little bit the boat directly behind it. I want them to know that there's some gorgeous boats on either side and in the background. But this, the central boat is where I want their eye to go. So that's where I put my detail. I don't put it everywhere else. And notice very strong dark, so there's going to be a very strong dark light contrast at my center of attention. More detail, stronger value contrast. Your brush dance really enjoy the movement of the brush there it's barely touching the paper as you can see I rarely do the whole big brush it has that well behind it the reservoir so that you can have access to a lot of paint so you can get some exciting brush strokes so I'm just letting my brush dance along these reflections Notice which directions the water is rippling in because it's going to be more than one in some waves like this. There's going to be a little bit of a, the tide is going to be one direction, the wind is going to be one direction, and there might be some, a little bit more movement for maybe a boat coming in or something like that. So it's going to be moving in a bunch of different directions. And you're going to want to paint all of them. So that's why the layering. Some darks to highlight that glow. And I'm remembering that I can see the water, the boats in, through the water because the water is so transparent. So, using some of the same colors in there. Delicate use of phthalo blue. Phthalo blue can get very heavy. 
you have to mix it with transparent colors. If you mix it with opaque colors, it, uh, it can turn really dull. It looks like such a bright, vibrant blue when you put it down and you just want to put it down more and more when it's wet and it's so exciting and then it dries and you've got this ugly gray blue sludge. So if you mix it with a transparent color like nickel azo yellow, for some reason it helps it dry very vibrant. I highly recommend that you take some colors and you just play with them and mix them around because you'll be surprised at the little nuances you find. And if you know those nuances, then pretty much any pigments will work for you. You just have to figure out how to make them and work for you and where you want them. Finger painting, you know me. So just a few more details. I want to keep it very light in the background, but I do want people to know that there's boats. This is Portofino, Italy, and it's gorgeous. Sparkly day, beautiful light. A little bit more darks in the background using the same color palette. So just let your brush dance around. A few more touches. Eventually you have to slap your hand and say, that's enough anymore and it will be ruined because it's that one more little bit that ruins it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it inspires you to go and paint some beautiful boats on a lake or ocean wherever you live. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe, leave a comment for ideas, and please watch the rest of the series with the lesson, the Southwest Harbor dinghies and the um, goslings. I really hope this inspires you to go paint. Please visit my website, paintingwatercolor.com, for more tips. Happy painting!